Good morning, and welcome to worship. I know this morning's a little bit different. We're worshiping in many different places, but we're worshiping together because, as Jesus said in John chapter 4, what matters is, is that we worship in spirit and in truth. And it truly is a privilege to be able to gather together in the name of Jesus Christ, to be able to gather together with that shared and common faith, even though these circumstances are something that none of us expected, to be able to lift up our hearts in worship and song to the one who holds the heavens. So even though we're not in the same space right now, I want to extend the same greeting that I would on a Sunday morning or a Sunday evening if, if we were together. So people of God, second buyer and dear friends, I want to give this uh, word of welcome from the Lord. Grace, mercy, peace, and love to you in abundance from our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord welcomes us. We can't give a mutual greeting, but I do want to extend this reminder that as the body of Christ, that we reach out to each other in special ways. So find ways to call and to text and to give a message, to be an encourager, to use your words, to lift one another up. But we are here to worship. So at this time, I would invite you to, to join with our praise team who will be leading our first song of praise this morning. Let's sing together, Lord, I need you. Our first scripture reading comes from Psalm 27. The psalmist wrote long ago, words of encouragement, true today, true then, true tomorrow. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And then concluding with verses 13 and 14, I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. 
wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Amen. Let's sing our second song this morning. The praise team will be leading us in all four verses of In Christ Alone. It is a joy and a privilege that we can pray for one another. Uh, we're going to do so today. Before I lead us in prayer, I wanted to share a couple of prayer items and announcements. Uh, Gladys will also be sending out an email uh, with some of these most recent items. Uh, but just to let you know, as of Saturday evening, uh, these are the most recent that we have. Uh, first off, uh, with Henrietta Toonstra, who moved to hospice and been talking with Rich and the family, and she is very near to the end of her life. So we want to pray for uh, Henrietta. We want to pray for Henry. We want to pray for the family. Also got news today that Dewey Bourne uh, was working in the garden, and he broke his hip, expected to need surgery, uh, possibly within the next 24 hours. So we want to pray for Dewey. And then also... Uh, news that uh, this comes from the Bauma family. Judy's mother-in-law, uh, Anna Bauma, who is 99 years old, she died earlier on Saturday. Uh, so we want to pray for the Lord's comfort and grace for that family. So I would invite you, if you could please, uh, wherever you are, let's bow our heads and let's go to the Lord in prayer together. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus Christ. 
and through the work of your Holy Spirit. Lord, we want to profess together that you are our Lord, that you are the rock, and you are our Redeemer. You are our ever-present help in times of trouble. And we thank you that you are a faithful God. Lord, great is your faithfulness. You have been good to us all the days of our lives. And Lord, we know and we trust and we thank you that you will continue to be with us now. Lord, as we gather in many places, we want to pray, Lord, we want to pray for wisdom for our nation's leaders. Lord, we pray for our president, we pray for our governor, we pray, Lord, for all those involved in the decisions that are being made. Lord, give them the wisdom and the grace that they need. Lord, recognizing that the circumstances are hard with what has been happening with the coronavirus. Lord, we pray that in all these things, that you would fill those who are responding with the wisdom that they need, Lord, that their work would be effective in leading the people of this country. Lord, also, we want to pray for those who are first responders. Lord, we pray for those who are working in the hospitals, ER doctors. We pray for nurses, all those who are caring in, in care facilities, assistant living facilities. We pray that you would give them strength, give them perseverance, protect their lives as well. And Lord, also, we pray. We pray for your mercy on this land. That you, O oh Lord, would extend your grace. And Lord, that we would start to hear good news, Lord. We pray for your wonderful work to guide uh, the researchers, but also, Lord, for those who are inflicted with uh, the virus, that you would help them to recover and gain strength. Almighty God, we also recognize that these are unique times that are causing us to be spending more time in our homes. And with that, when people are within the same walls over an extended period of time, sometimes that can lead to tension and strife. Holy Spirit, come among us. Fill us with your peace. Holy Spirit, fill us with patience and love and kindness. May our homes and the words on our lips be seasoned, Lord, in a way that your grace is felt by every single person. Almighty God, also we pray for those that are part of the second Byron family. As we just heard, we pray for Dewey, we pray for healing, and we pray, Lord, that you would guide the hands of all the doctors and medical staff involved in his care following this uh, break with his hip. We commit him to you, Lord. Give him the healing that his body needs. We pray also for Gord Ellens. We pray that you would preserve his life, knowing, Lord, that he needs a second heart surgery. But right now, it doesn't seem like that is going to be happening in the next couple weeks. May each day, may each week, he experience you upholding him by your righteous right hand. Almighty God, we pray also for the Toonstra family. We thank you for the testimony of faith that Henrietta has been all the days of her life, for Henry and Henrietta's marriage, that close bond that they've had going into their seventh decade. We pray for your Holy Spirit to grant peace to the family. May you comfort them, grant them peace. We pray especially for Henry, who has had his best friend, by his side for so many years. Holy Spirit, comforter and counselor, may you bless him with your loving presence. For the Bauma family also following the loss of Judy's mother-in-law, we pray, Lord, for peace too, knowing, Lord, that funeral services and visitations and those ways that we normally can gather together during times of loss. Some of those things are, are simply being disrupted. So Lord, as they grieve, we trust that you will be near to them and grant them your loving presence as well. And Lord, as we pray, we thank you that we can be united in prayer. So Lord, we ask that you would hear our prayer as we pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. May your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And all God's people said, Amen. It's good to be able to pray together. It's also good that we can profess our faith in the Lord together. Don't have to stand, but wherever you are, I invite you to say these words of the Apostles' Creed. Let's say with heart and with voice, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, this time I want to invite you to turn with me in your Bibles to Psalm 86. I'll be reading all 17 verses of Psalm 86. Hear me, Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Guard my life, for I am faithful to you. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I call to you all day long. Bring joy to your servant, Lord, for I put my trust in you. You, Lord, are forgiving and good abounding in love to all who call to you. Hear my prayer, Lord. Listen to my cry for mercy. When I am in distress, I call to you because you answer me. Among the gods, there is none like you, Lord. No deeds can compare with yours. All the nations you have made will come and worship before you, Lord. They will bring glory to your name. For you are great. And do marvelous deeds. You alone are God. Teach me your way, Lord, that I may rely on your faithfulness. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. I will praise you, Lord my God, with all my heart. I will glorify your name forever. For great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the depths, from the realm of the dead. Arrogant foes are attacking me, O oh God. Ruthless people are trying to kill me. They have no regard for you. But you, Lord, are a compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger and abounding in love and faithfulness. Turn to me and have mercy on me. Show your strength on behalf of your servant. Save me because I serve you just as my mother did. Give me a sign of your goodness, that my enemies may see it and be put to shame. For you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. For you, Lord, have helped us and comforted us. This is the word of the Lord, and we give thanks to God for it. I chose this passage this week recognizing that circumstances have changed. So I opened up God's word and came across this psalm, this beautiful psalm, a word of encouragement for those who are going through distress or trouble or turmoil or, or sometimes when it feels like their world is being flipped upside down. But to have these words that the Holy Spirit inspired long ago, where the psalmist wrote, Hear me, Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Guard my life, for I am faithful to you. Save your servant who trusts you. 
There's something that is true and has always been true. It's this basic reality that we are needy. We are always needy. We have been needy. But sometimes it takes circumstances to make us realize our need for God. Now, I remember I spent four summers lifeguarding. Always loved getting out in the sun. And, and in the four summers that I did, only once out of all those hours that I spent sitting out at the pool or sitting out in the bay, was there ever a time where there was a child who was in distress? This particular child, he was probably seven, eight, nine years old. He was in the four-foot area, and I was watching up from the chair. And he was bopping up and then sinking down and panic splashing a little bit. And then he'd bop up, he'd take a, a deep breath, and he'd come on down. But he could, tip, he could touch his toes, and he would jump up and starting to realize that this child isn't moving closer to the edge. But as I was starting to, to reach for my whistle and get down from the chair, as I'm watching this young, this young man, a different lifeguard who is closer than I jumps into the water, reaches out and extends that lifeguarding raft, that, that buoy, and the child latches on and is brought safely to the side. Now, it was interesting then that that child was in distress but was being watched. That child was struggling, but not only was there a lifeguard, there were many lifeguards that had their eyes on him. So even though he felt like he was in danger, never once was he actually in danger. Now, the psalmist, he knew something beautiful. He knew when we see in verse 2, guard my life for I am faithful to you. Save your servant who trusts in you. The psalmist knew his need, but more importantly, he knew that the Lord our God was there to guard and to protect his life. The circumstances of today and the past week, they involve this virus that has been all over the news they involve things like empty shells at grocery stores. They involve now isolation. You're not here on a Sunday morning where you want to be. You're isolated. You're contained. You're separated from spending time with the people that you love and doing the things that you love. And I think part of what's going on is this has taught us, and, and maybe it's retaught us, just how much we need the Lord but to know in our need that we serve a faithful God. Verse 3 of this psalm, you are my God. This is a statement of faith that the psalmist gives. To say, you are my God. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I call to you all day long. Bring joy to your servant, Lord, for I put my trust in you. There is this bond, this recognition between our faithful God and the psalmist, between the God that we love and serve and the church, the community, the people that God cares for. But I want to note something here, that during the psalmist's time of need, he quotes well-known verses of Scripture. He actually brings to bear words from Exodus 34. I wanted to read those for you where this where Moses taught the Israelites these words, the Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger and abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to a thousand generations and forgiving wickedness, rebellion, and sin. Walter Brueggemann, he noted this. He says, we may note the way in which Israel copes in seasons of darkness. In such times, Israel does not freelance or try to ad hoc to make faith affirmations out of their own private experience or circumstances. No, in such times, Israel falls back on the tried and true formulations that have special credibility in such times. And the core of what Exodus 34 is, it's God's nature. 
and for us to know that God is our helper. God was their helper. God is our helper. God's going to continue to be our helper during times of need. Now, it's interesting, we're in the middle of the Apostles' Creed series, and this was the Sunday where we were supposed to celebrate Christmas. We're going to look at that line in the Apostles' Creed, I believe in Jesus who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. I still want to read a a few verses from Matthew 1. Let's just think for a moment, what is the Christmas story? Is the Christmas story not about God coming to us? during our time of need? Did those people in the first century need a Savior? Absolutely. But not everybody was looking for help. But God didn't wait for everybody to raise up their hands and said, please send a helper. No, God planned it in advance to send a helper and came in the form of a child. As Matthew 1 says, she will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. And all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a child, a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. The Lord our God is with us. The Lord our God is with you this morning. Wherever you are watching this video, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Verse 8. It is a reminder, too, of just how great our God is. It asks the question, and it states, there's no one like you. Who, who but our God would leave heaven and come to us? Who but our God would be so willing out of love to humble himself? And that's why we can be reassured, as the catechism says in question and answer 36, how does the holy conception and birth of Jesus Christ benefit us? We can say that Jesus, he is our mediator. He is God and human. He is like us in every single way, yet was without sin. And he covers us with his innocence and his perfect holiness. My sinfulness in which I am covered, I am carried, I am taken care of through the one who became like us. I want to go back to the time of being a lifeguard. Part of the training was about us staying calm, but helping a child in the pool stay calm. And one of the things that we were taught and lifeguards are taught in this standard training, it's two things. One is to speak in a calming voice, and the second is to maintain eye contact. You see, when a, when a child is, is distressed, even in four feet of water, their eyes are going left and right, they're turning around, their arms are starting to flail, they might even start to panic. But for a lifeguard to, to swim near that child and to look them in the eye and say, Hi, I'm here, I'm a lifeguard, I'm, I'm here to help you. Look right here, look me in the eye, I want you to look right here. I'm a lifeguard, and I'm here to help you. Now, some would res- would respond and, and calm down, but others, you'd have to wait 30 seconds for them to get a little bit more physically tired so that their arms would stop flailing, and they would actually look you in the eye, and then you extend that hand, you extend what you need to do, you pull them in off to the side, and they hear and they see in that eye contact That someone is here to help. Psalm 86 verse 11. It's the Lord telling us, look to me. I understand. Things are going on that that are challenging right here. Hear my voice. Look to me. 
for I am looking at you, the Lord our God says. Verse 11, teach me your way, Lord, that I may rely on your faithfulness. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. Day-to-day life, we know this. Let's go back a month. Let's go back a month ago. Normal life is, is filled with distractions. It, it just is. Maybe we weren't even aware of all the different things that we use to either amuse or to, or to distract ourselves in the midst of our day-to-day life. But what has happened since last week is that one by one, so many of these Some are distractions, some of these are hobbies, some of these are just the rhythms of our weeks. But just to focus on the distraction part, so many of these distractions have been taken away from us. And now here we are with a choice. Now, how are we going to spend our time? Because the choice still remains. When I pull up my phone, when I look on my computer, how am I going to spend my time? Perhaps this is a season for us to listen to the Lord's voice even more. I know there are links that you can find online. You can find the top 100 movies to watch right now and we can spend an hour and 47 minutes 100 times over. But what if we said, I want to sit down and open up God's word. I need to figure out a new rhythm to my week. I want to make sure I put anchors within my day now that are me listening and being quiet and being still. I want to pull together my family. I want to pray with them. I want to pick up the phone and share a Bible verse with a friend. prayer of Psalm 86 is, Lord, give me an undivided heart. Lord, help me to fix my eyes on you, for I know that you already have your eyes fixed on me, but more importantly than that, we serve a great God who is the helper of many. This is what makes God God, that he can be there to help people in Italy, and he can be there to help people who are there in a nursing home, and he can be there to help the person that is three doors down from you, yet a world apart. The Lord our God can be there to be your helper right now. Psalm 86, verse 16, it concludes this way. Turn to me and have mercy on me. Grant your strength to your servant. That's the cry out to God. That we would join with believers across this world praying and asking for God's mercy. But also, may the prayer of our heart be, Lord, help me to turn my eyes to you. Let's pray. Almighty God, we love you and we thank you. And Lord, our hearts are filled with joy knowing that when we pray that you hear our voice. So again, Lord, through the work of your Holy Spirit, we lift up our eyes to the hills. For we know when we lift our eyes up, that is where our help comes from. So, Lord, we ask for your mercy, and we ask that you would help us to truly have an undivided heart that seeks you with all of who we are. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, before we conclude with a, a final song, I wanted to share a blessing, and then afterwards we'll have the praise team sing. Salvation belongs to our God. Words will be on the bottom of the screen. Encourage you to sing along with them at home.
people of God, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the unconditional love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Oh